In addition to accuracy, precision and recall are other metrics that we can use to measure the quality of our model. Precision and recall are derived from the field of information retrieval and give us a mechanism to trade off our false positives and false negatives. The following is a pretty cool figure that I borrowed from Wikipedia that illustrates the ideas of precision and recall. So let me walk through this figure. The ideas of precision and recall come from the field of information retrieval. And so when we think about them in the context of classification, we're thinking about whether or not we are able to retrieve or identify the positive cases uh, where y equals 1. So this figure illustrates this idea by this box which contains the space of all possible examples and the circles that are filled are the, the examples we're trying to recall. These are the, the positive cases, and the circles that are empty are the circles that we're not trying to recall. These are the, the negative cases, or where y equals 0. This big black circle here illustrates the things that our model identifies as positive. So this is what our model predicts as y equals 1, and these are things that our information retrieval system would return. Now we can divide this, this space of things that we return into the true positives. These are the things that we should return and that we did return. And the false positives, this, these are the things that we classified as one that we return but should not have. Then over here outside of the circle on the left is a set of things that we should have returned, the things where y equals 1 but our model did not classify as positives, where instead our model predicted y equals 0. So that means in the ideal world, our model should have just selected this box here, when in reality it selected this circle here. So we can take this picture and use it to illustrate precision and recall. So precision can be thought of how many items that we selected are actually relevant. That is, how many tumors that we classified as malignant were in fact malignant, divided by the number of tumors that we classified as malignant. So that's our precision. And then recall measures how many of the relevant items did we actually select. Another way to think of the recall is what is the coverage of our model? That is the number of tumors that we classified as malignant that were in fact malignant divided by the number of tumors that were malignant. Right? So you can think of this the coverage of all the malignant tumors, how many did we get, the recall. Then you can think of precision is how much you trust the model when it classifies a tumor as malignant. Another way to put that is how accurate is the model when it classifies a tumor as malignant. So that is a pictorial representation of the precision and recall. Now we can walk through the mathematics of how we compute the precision and recall directly from our uh, confusion matrix earlier. So the precision is defined as the number of true positives, that is the things that we classified as malignant that were in fact malignant, or where we classified something as y equals 1 when in fact y equals 1, divided by the true positives, the same thing, plus all of the false positives, which is where we classified something as malignant when it was not. So that's the, the area of this circle. Another way to write the denominator here is just to say the number of things that we predicted as true. So the number of things that were in fact true divided by the number of things that we predicted as true. That's precision. And then recall, again, measures the number of things that we predicted as true that were in fact true, divided by the number of things that we predicted as true that were in fact true, and the number of things that we falsely predicted as negative. And we can simplify this denominator by simply calculating the total number of things that were actually true. Right, so going back to this picture, it's the same as above, the number of things we predicted were true, that were in fact true, divided by the number of things that were actually true. All right, so that is how you compute precision and recall. So precision and recall are often framed as a trade-off, where increasing precision often results in decreased recall, or increasing recall often results in decreased precision. So to see why that is, if we look at, for example, precision, and we try to increase our precision, one way to do that would be to increase our threshold tau at which we're willing to accept a prediction as, as a positive. If we do that, we're essentially going to reduce the number of things that we classify as tumors. So the size of the denominator in precision will decrease. And ideally, that will decrease a little bit faster than the size of the numerator, the number of things that we actually said were, were uh, malignant and are, in fact, malignant. So that increases overall precision. 
but it can also hurt our overall recall because a lot of the tumors that we would might have caught earlier will no longer catch because they didn't quite make that threshold. And so increasing precision often results in decreased recall. And likewise, if we try to get more and more tumors or cover or capture more and more of the malignant tumors, the accuracy on the ones that we do classify as malignant will ultimately decrease, as we'll have to admit more of these uh, false positives. Now, balancing precision and recall uh, depends on the application. And in a moment, we'll talk about how to balance this trade-off between precision and recall in the context of classifying the tumors. So now let me walk through how we calculate precision and recall. And to do that, I've implemented some basic functions to make thresholded predictions, compute the precision and recall, and then construct the precision and recall at different thresholds. So let me walk through the code. So this first function here is a, a simplified version of our earlier function that can, makes a prediction at a given threshold, but here we pass in just the probabilities instead of the model and the threshold we want to make the prediction at. So the precision at a threshold takes the y value, the true, the true observed uh, value, the probabilities from our model and the threshold. It's going to make the predictions using our, our probabilities at that threshold. And then it's going to measure the precision, which is the total number of things that we classified as true and where the actual observed value is also true. Now this is actually a funny way to write this. I could change this, and in fact, I'll do that right now. So we'll say where y is equal to true as well. Divided, so that's the precision is this, this is the true positives, divided by the sum of the y hat, what we predicted to be true. So that's the precision. Recall uh, has the same uh, numerator, so we'll change this actually to make it a little bit clearer. So once more, we have the the total number of things that we predicted to be true and were in fact true, divided in this case for recall by the total number of things that were in fact true. And now we can construct a precision and recall curve for all the possible probabilities. So what do I mean by possible probabilities? So if I give you a vector of the predicted probabilities for each of the y's, then I can look at the unique probabilities and then these are at least a base set of candidate thresholds. So each one of these thresholds is a point at which if I were to move from one threshold to the next, I would change the prediction on my training data set. So then I can compute the precision at each of the thresholds in my set of unique thresholds. That's precision. And I can compute the recall at each of the thresholds in my set of thresholds. And so I'm going to return the precision, the recall, and the unique set of thresholds that gave me the corresponding precision and recall. So I'll run this calculation here. And now I can plot the precision against the recall. So the y-axis will be precision and the x-axis will be recall. So this is my precision and recall curve. So how do we read this plot? So again, the y-axis is precision, the x-axis is recall. If we look on the very top left here, this is where we pick a threshold of 0 0.999997939 dot dot dot. So this is a very high threshold. And therefore we have a very high precision. In fact, y equals one. So we've classified everything that meets this threshold uh, correctly. But we have a terrible recall. So only a tiny fraction of our data meets this threshold. So as we move across the, the plot here, notice the precision is still one. So all of these, these tumors are being classified correctly. So every tumor above a threshold of 0.981992 dot 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 uh, is classified correctly as malignant but only a fraction of those that are malignant are classified in this, this uh, above this threshold. So we move right to right here. Actually, go a little more over. So if we pick a threshold of point uh, of point nine five seven two 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 so on, then we all of the thing, all of the tumors that, that are above that threshold are in fact malignant. But of the malignant tumors, we only capture 45.64%. Uh, that is our recall. And so if we want to have higher recall, we're going to need to uh, decrease our threshold. So as we move right on this plot, we're decreasing our threshold further. Uh, so if I want to get a higher recall, I might choose a threshold of, in fact, if I go to our closer 0 .5, uh, 50 thre uh, threshold, then I'm going to get a precision of 0.77. So the one, the tumors that I classify as malignant 
only 77.43 or 0.44 percent of those tumors are going to in fact be malignant, but I'm going to get 86.78 percent of the tumors that are malignant. Well, I will then successfully classify as malignant. So I'm getting better coverage. So another thing to take away from this plot is that the more area in this under this curve, so the, the further to the right this curve goes before it drops, the better the model. That is, I'm going to have higher precision and higher recall. All right, so that's the, the plot of precision recall. Now, scikit-learn actually has built-in functions to compute precision recall, so you don't have to write the above code. Uh, so the precision recall curve function, and we can plot that as well. And so uh, this is the precision recall curve constructed using scikit-learn. And so it, it looks uh, the same as the one above. So this is the one we just computed. The little bumps down here. And here is the same curve computed using scikit-learn. Um, there's one other way to visualize this data. So I'm going to plot that as well. So we could also just plot precision and recall. Uh, and so you can see as we move the x-axis now is threshold. And so as we move our, our threshold for uh, accepting a, a tumor as malignant to the right, we increase precision uh, and we see a gradual decrease in the number of tumors that were malignant that we actually covered correctly, our recall, uh, until we get closer to the edge here. So we make our, our precision really high, then we start to drop a large fraction of the tumors. All right, so the next question uh, is how do we use precision and recall? Uh, and let me actually turn back to our example with classifying tumors. So in a real world application, we might actually want to use our classifier to, as a filter to identify which tumors would require additional uh, human study. Uh, and so it could be a way to speed up the processing of samples in a pathology lab. Um, the goal here is, is to be able to identify which of these samples contains tumors. Now, because there's going to be follow-up study on those that do contain tumors, and perhaps we don't even look further at the ones that don't contain tumors, we actually want to control our false positive and false negative rates in such a way that we minimize the number of false negatives, um, perhaps at the expense of increased false positives. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, if we say a tumor is benign and it is in fact malignant, then that patient may not actually get any follow-up treatment or further study. And so that tumor could go on to metastasize and actually cause a, a lot of harm. Uh, conversely, if we say that a tumor is malignant when it is not, then the follow-up study, well, perhaps expensive, will ultimately identify that that tumor is in fact benign. So what does this mean for precision and recall? Well, what it means is we'd like to have a very high recall and we're willing to compromise a bit on precision. So if we want to ensure that 95% of our malignant tumors are classified as malignant, that means that we want 95% recall. So let's see how we would use that to pick a threshold. So here we're going to say we want our recall to be greater than or equal to 95, uh, 95%. Now this is a little bit confusing as I'm using NumPy argmin. Uh, if you recall, recall in this plot here is a thing that is decreasing as I, as I go from, from left to right. So my recall is going down. So argmin will return the index at which it first dipped below 95. And then I'm going to take one step backwards to get the threshold back to 95. All right, so then I'm going to choose that threshold at that location, and I'm going to look at the precision and recall at that threshold. All right, so the threshold we've selected is uh, 0 0.1179 dot dot dot. Um, that is a fairly low threshold. That's a low threshold because we want to get 95% coverage, so a very high recall. So we're trying to get 95% recall. And so if we take this plot here and we follow the red line, we're trying to drop, go to the, to the right until the Y value uh, drops below 95, then we're going to go back one. So we keep going really carefully up 94. Uh, there we go. So right there, uh, if we look at the X value, our threshold is 0 0.117915, um, and that is what we see below, where our recall is the first time it, it's above uh, 95. So that is the, the threshold of 0 0.117 uh, and the recall of 0.95. 
Um, and then we could jump down and see the precision at that point as well. Um, and we calculate it here to be 0.59. And therefore, that would mean that roughly 41% of the tumors that we classified as malignant would go on to need additional study uh, to verify that they are, in fact, benign. Now, another way to look at this would be how much money or how much time do we save in pathology? That is, which fraction of samples that are model identify as benign and therefore would not require additional study? So here I've already run this, and if I look at the proportion of samples that were below that threshold, we see that 38.67%, or roughly 39% of the samples, fell below that threshold, which means that we would not have required additional processing on those samples. Now, in practice, that could actually be a pretty reasonable savings, but it actually comes with a bit of a downside. We diagnosed 5% of the tumors as benign when they were actually malignant. And in practice, that could be pretty unacceptable because those patients might not uh, receive the therapy they needed. So we could try to improve the model. And so I added a little additional bonus content where I've taken the basic model we've described earlier and I've extended it by adding all of the features in our training data. All right, so let's run this. So we'll run our, our model. Actually, I'll show you what it looks like when we've, we set this incorrectly. So I set to like 100, it fails to converge. So if I set this a bit higher um, and that'll converge correctly. Uh, so we've, we've trained a model using all the, the features that we had. Uh, we can make predictions and compute the precision and recall curve uh, this time using the more advanced model. And you'll notice that the, the precision uh, recall curve goes much further to the right. This is a, a better model because we're using all of the available features. All right, so we can do the same calculation as before. Uh, and this time, actually, we're going to look at a tighter threshold. So we want 99% coverage. That is, we want a recall rate, uh, a recall of, of, of uh, 0.99. So do the same calculation before. Uh, so our threshold for that recall is 0 0.13. Uh, that threshold gives us now a precision of 0.87, so much higher precision, and we're getting a, a recall of 0.99. So it's a very high recall. So if we then go and look at our test data, uh, so we run this on the test data, uh, we can actually look at our confusion matrix. And so if we had a new set of samples, this is what we might see in, in, the, in the wild. So of our 57 samples, uh, it's worth noting that 37 of those we uh, uh, correctly classified as benign, 17 of those we correctly classified as malignant, and three of those we incorrectly classified as malignant. So this would have required additional study, but would have not caused harm to the patients. Uh, and here we've uh, zero of this, this test data set did we falsely conclude was benign uh, when it was in fact malignant. So these are the dangerous cases and we, we did in fact minimize that. Okay, so hopefully through this notebook you've learned a bit about how to construct logistic regression models and then in this last segment how to interpret the, the probabilities that we generate from these logistic regression models and how to choose thresholds uh, for different objectives by using the precision and recall um, and the trade-off between precision and recall.